Hi everyone, you're welcome to the first episode of Test Postcast Niger. This is the brainchild of Rotimas Integrated Services Limited, and this is the first ever episode of this uh, podcast program. Um, I am your host, my name is Solu Kelev, and here with me I have my co host, Oluwashon Adelusi. We'll be putting you through the journey of getting more information about what is required to start, grow, and manage a pest control business in Nigeria. And also, this is a platform of mentorship, a platform where you get more information on everything that is needed in making sure that you become a notable figure in the pest control industry of Nigeria. The Pest Podcast is designed to promote professionalism and will focus on a variety of topics such as pests, products, fumigation equipment, strategies, and integrated pest management. Also included in the pilot plan is to share personal stories of guest speakers, pest control marketing, and rodent control strategies, entomology, and many more. Pest Focus Niger is geared towards pest management discussions in the African way. This show will be hosted by Tolu Kelev, the founder of Rotimax Integrated Services Limited, Rotimax Pest Control Training Academy, and Alochem Hygiene Nigeria. He is also the author of a resourceful pest control handbook, Predictive Models for Starting and Growing a Pest Control Business in Nigeria. Watch, download, or listen to the complete episode of Pest Podcast Niger on all available platforms Spotify, YouTube, Google Play, iTunes via Rotimax Limited. For more inquiries, please visit www.pestcontroltraining.com ng.com or call 080-2450-9532. And of course, I am your co-host, Oluwashion Adelusi. And uh, we have two amazing guests in the house with us today. This uh, guest that has over the years, over a decade, shows that, uh, show that they are, they are, um, uh, they are not pushover in the pest control industry of Nigeria. Uh, these are people that we also have looked up to at a point in time. They, are, uh, they have done very well, you know, in the have a niche for themselves. Um, I have, number one, I have PCO Ebenisa Aki Osoye, the Managing Director of EOA Pest Control Services Limited. PCO Ebenisa, thank you for coming. It's thank a pleasure you. having you here. It's my pleasure. Thank you so much. And by my other side, I have uh you say good tarigi. <laughs> yes, uh he's a man that has held on to limelight for so long, close to two decades, and a respectable figure in the pest control industry of Nigeria. That's in the person of PCO Abidola, the MDCU of Pest Masters International Limited. Thank you, sir, for taking our time to be here today. Thank you so much for having me. All right, uh, we thank you for your time. Um, Pest Podcast Niger is a platform uh, that is that centers around uh, promoting professionalism in the pest control industry of Nigeria and promoting professionalism in pest control industry in Africa, not just Nigeria, and also uh, speaking or talking about pest management in Africa way. Like I said a few minutes ago, I have had experience of pest control training in the Western country. I've attended trainings in the United Kingdom. And from what I saw there, I discovered that um, what the experience or what goes on there in terms of pest management is not relatable to what we have in Africa. We have different challenges. In the UK, mosquito is not their problem. I remember in the classroom, I had one of the lecturers that, ah, what, how do we control snake? And they say, what are you talking about? We don't have snakes there. We don't have mosquitoes there, you know? So we want a platform that can narrate stories that relate to our environment because we do so much of you know they call it follow follow you understand but it's high time that we have to put attention to that and uh, our guest there will be doing so much about that so first of all i'd like to start with pcu ebenisa i want to get to know about you better pcu ebenisa um who is pcu ebenisa and what is this eoa pest control services let me tell them about all right, thank you so much for having me around this morning. Uh, my name is Odile Zaki Osoye, and uh, I'm the MD CEO 
of UA pest control services. Uh, we've been around for a while now, and uh, actually, the business is just all about helping others. The business is all about uh, the, making sure that we are we have a pest-free society in our nation. And that is what we have been trying to do for a very long time. And God has been helping us. So, Kishabi, Pest Masters, how long have you been in business? And what what brought Pest Masters up? And we want to have a little understanding about your own personality at the end of the company. Okay, thank you very much. Um, the truth is, Pest masters coming into the pest control industry is actually something that uh, I never planned for. It's something that, um, like you said, close to two decades um, ago, I had this uh, nudge to go into a new industry and, you know, like every other person, I just prayed and asked God, okay, so what industry would you like for me to go to, you know? And then I had that still small voice and here I am today. Uh, so because of our time, I'm not able to go into this, but there were specific things, you know, that I got and there were very, very clear instructions. And it's from there that first master since an national was done. So we um we are all about empowerment, we are all about eradication of pest, you know, better environment and um, so many other people to who are that crossroad of okay where do i go from here sometimes um we have the opportunity to help them nurture a company that has to do with um, environmental health a company that you know can help the society at large and uh, make the world a better place so pest masters basically wasn't an idea it was something i i never planned for but you know as god will have it all the people around me they were already strategically positioned to help me at that time i'm talking about 2000 and um, 2003 2004 you know 2003 or there but you know the people around that were already strategically positioned and you know it's been it's been it's been awesome the journey has been wonderful it's been um, of course a whole lot of challenges along the line but it's it's just been an awesome experience yeah. all the way and i tell you the truth we are not even where we want to be yeah. even though we are not where we are we used to be yeah. thank you Mr. uh peace your business uh, from what you're saying that's that's a long journey how long have you been in the press management business over 10 years now. over 10 years and from your own angle what has the journey been like so far uh, what i will say is that the journey has been good uh if you want to talk about the present situation now but when you start it's not really that easy uh, most especially when you are trying to introduce a new business to uh to the world especially in the area of pest control which people don't really value at that particular time when we started because that particular time people are used to people carrying this uh, stuff on the bar walking on the street and start saying oh, my, oh, my, oh, my, oh, my, oh, all those stuff like that so you saying that you are going into that kind of industry and you want to do it in a different way it was very very difficult to to start especially uh, I can remember there was a time too that you know financial muscle too was a problem to get started and you just have to like you know kept like we kept going till now that we are still going and like he said we are not actually there yet but we were not we are not at uh, where we used to be so, presently uh, so it's not really easy when you're starting but presently now it's getting better okay so coming to you let, let's take our rating to the past uh, 10 years let's take uh, uh let's rate over 10 years uh would you have seen that there has been some development in the pest control of nigeria for the past 10 years based on your experience 
based on my experience, what I can tell you is if you have an industry where you have an influx of newcomers coming in, um, coming in on a regular basis, coming in with um, opportunity to get trained by Ruti Max, by Best Masters, by D14, by some of these companies, you know, when you have an industry that people feel I can try here, then definitely you will say that industry is um, growing and there's been a lot of um, changes, information are out there. I tell you the truth, whether we admit it or not, pest control in Nigeria has affected pest control in the world. We are individuals, we are members of a country that tests for knowledge and that knowledge has driven us to the point where the world already knows the pest control industry in Nigeria is a big place. It's a big one. And it's something that even international companies are coming in to partner with us. You know. So I'll tell you that in the last 10 years, even before COVID, there's been a lot of massive um, influx of um, new um, companies coming into the pest control industry, cleaning companies, taking pest control industry as a company on so separating and you know, differentiating and looking for differentia um, different, differentiating factor for their pest control and all of that. So it's it's been massive in the last 10 years. A whole lot of people are coming in. Knowledge is being pumped, pumped into the industry. Um, money is flowing, you know. I, I, I tell you the truth. Even some of our clients are coming into the industry. Yeah. I remember um, my head of operations um, about um, over over ten years ago was pushed by my client, and we bought him two vehicles, um, two most expensive pest control machine as at that time in the industry that were that was over you know um, one point five million. You know they bought all of those things for him just so that they can have. A, a secondary means of income from mm. pest control. Mm. That's over 10 years ago. So you can imagine what's happening now. Mm. You know. So and of course, how much was I paying in that mm. <laughs> so that opportunity to that junction. Mm. I was actually going to we're actually gonna to come to that. Uh, iron challenges in the pest control industry. And uh, obviously your operations manager then so to speak, served you breakfast. Uh, and this is a common experience. Yeah. What has been the experience like dealing with um, uh, workforce from your own point of angle? You just said somebody pushed his staff, yeah. bought him, bought vehicles. As you know, what has been your experience having to deal with um, uh, the staffing aspect of pest control? You know, because uh, I would say that that has been. Uh, challenging far from the beginning because most cases when people you know when they are coming into a uh, pest control industry and you are trying to employ number one you can't do the job anymore so you have to invite people to come and join you and the moment they come and you begin to tell them that okay we want to employ a pest control technician and things like that so you have to provide training you have to train them and uh, because our uh, country is not really well organized in terms of uh, pest control chemicals and the rest like that and uh, you will see some of them after knowing the job they will want to stand alone even if your customers did not take them away from you they themselves will try to retire themselves because you will feel like they can also do the same thing that you are doing and that has always been the challenge with them and at the end of the day you just have to keep recruiting so back to the issue of staffing um from what you said um, a customer buying vehicles for an operations manager to set him up is i thought we've had it all recently a young man relocated from uh us and we were in the course of training, the first thing is to try to also do some coaching. So we're used to, you know, for people to try to coach your staff, it means that you're doing something very good. You understand? And you are you are up there. But you know, your own is different. That, that person would really mean you to buy vehicles. And <laughs> have you had a similar experience with losing a staff to maybe a computer, a, a, a customer? And how, how do you feel? How that, That's quite... Uh, 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 I've not really had that... Uh, 
experience, but uh, I've, I can say that I have uh, staff that are now MD and CEO of their own business right now. Best control business? Best control business. Okay. And immediately they depart away from you. After one week, you see them also uh, doing their adverts and doing all manner of things. But just to add to what he said concerning uh, customers coming to do our business, you know, sometimes when you, when you charge, okay, like an incident that, I, that occurred to me, a uh, customer, uh, that time I used to go out to work by myself because uh, I started alone. And I got to this customer's house and it was like, I didn't even have a car at that particular time. So he was just looking at me like, how did you do it? <laughs> and I was like, excuse me, sir. I was the one you called to come and do your fumigation. And he said, yes, I know, I know, I know, I know. As in, you are an hustler and stuff like that. And, you know, he just kept on going and going and going. And later he asked me the amount I collected. And, you know, we had to discuss it again. And he was calculating that, oh, imagine that you are doing about two or three or four in a day. That's a lot of money. So, you know, sometimes we give our customers idea that there is money in this uh, industry because they will just calculate it and say, wow. And like uh, he said earlier on, so anyone that is affordable, and most of our customers are big people, actually. If you look at it, they are not the, because hardly would you see somebody staying in face me and, and want to come and patronize you. They would rather tell you that, let that mosquito be biting me, I will buy malaria tablet and things like that. But people that can afford the service, they are well to do. And most times they turn to be your competitor. Uh, so that's why even in the industry, you, you don't have to like stay in one place. You just have to keep going. You is staffing your biggest challenge. What do you consider as your biggest challenge so far in the industry? Okay. 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 If I'm going to think about it, um, what's our biggest challenge? I think um, the biggest challenge for me is not um, okay. So there are so many challenges, but it's for me to look for what the biggest challenge is. I think um, I think for me the biggest challenge is um, redundancy. Yeah, because. Um, it's, we have an industry where you can pick up anybody and train the person in less than three, six months. If the person has not extremely brilliant, just average and okay, the person will pick up. And that's why you see that uh, there is a there is easy entry into the industry, you know, because once you understand the basics and you have passion, you know, a whole lot of things will, you know, so, um, so I would say for me, it's your ability, it's innovation. It is innovation, the biggest challenge, because you get to a point where by the time you start making money, I mean, you look at your account and you see um, 500,000, 1 million, you see 2 million, then you, at some point, I say 5 million, you see 10 million, and then you get to that comfort zone. And the truth is, the industry takes no prisoners, it's not waiting for anybody. New guys are coming in with crazy innovative ideas, you know. So it's for you to. There was a time I had a challenge, you know. One of my staff, you know, uh, that is very big now, um, was copying every step I took. Every step, you know, was doing every as in like a replica. I mean, he wasn't with me anymore. The style is on, but everything was just too so similar, like, and I had to confront him, like. People will mistake your brand for mine, you know. And then the funny thing is, our name was also similar. And when I was going to pick a name, it was also a similar name. So I had, so it was a challenge for me. So I had to be on my toe, like. So that's why I said innovation, because once innovation goes out of the window, I remember the same guy told me one day, you know, was like an uh, um, inspirational uh, boss. You know, like that, right there in front of my office, many, many years ago. You know, many, many years ago. So, um, if you are in this industry and you have a whole lot of people in this industry and you are you are not innovating, you are not bringing fresh ideas. You are you can be comfortable because the thing is, it's a 
it's a business where there's retainership. So some at some point, whether you do that or not, if you keep your old clients, and that's what you see happening to some of the elders mm. in, yeah, in the yeah. industry, you know, you keep those old clients really tight. And that helps with that cash flow is certain. They don't go out, you know, they don't do so and homes is a homes um pest control, pest control for homes and homeowners is um a segment on its own, it's a market on its own. Best control to um, commercial hotels and all of those commercial it's a, it's, 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 it's you know a segment on the same so um so some of those people so when you keep your old clients sometimes you just relax and then that's it so i think for me it is not staffing because i mean nigeria the rate of uh, unemployment in nigeria right now is not if i want to take your staff today Forget it, I'll take. It's, it's all about money. Bargaining power. <laughs> Bargaining power. <laughs> okay, so the guy that came into the industry that pushed my operation, the, the woman spent nothing less than maybe seven million to come in. Mm. It's money. It's There's money. money available. She spent, what am I even saying? She bought those two vehicles brand new. She bought similar vehicles that we use, but even a higher grade. So, what am I even saying? Seven million. The vehicles they don't. At that time, we can't cost less than six million each. So she's not. This, this happened how many years ago? This happened. This is less than ten years. All right. I have this personal belief that um, funding, access to funds, is not enough to grow a business. You know, do you share similar? Uh, I was talking about passion. <laughs> Can passion grow business without money? Uh, actually, uh, I was just about to. Say that and before. I'm asking that where, <laughs> where is that company now? Are they still at the forefront, so to speak? Well, the thing is, they were never at the forefront, and they were not fighting mm. to be at the forefront. Okay. You understand? Mm. In this industry, the crumbs can sustain you. Mm. You get so the person that invested doesn't have a passion. It's not about, but it's the experience, and because he knows that this guy is dedicated, and you know, I mean, I employed this guy. He came to my office and he was practically frustrating like his life was in a mess. Mm. And I took him like that and I invested myself in him. Mm -hmm. you know, and he became he knew this work. He, he understand. You know, you know, you, you get to a point where you train someone, the person knows exactly what you are thinking. You get to a site after um, inspection and then you are able to trace without the use of tools. Okay, this is where these guys could, could have come in from. This is what needs to be done. All of that. You could do all of this analysis, you know. So it, 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 and for you to be able to get to a point where you can think like me, which means yes, you have gotten you've gotten something, something yeah. substantial, and that's exactly what happened. So, so they just rolled on the guy's experience, and then of course the, 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 these particular people they have the connection, they have friends, they have people in high places where they can use their own network to get jobs. I just need somebody who knows it, who can deliver quality, and they, that's it. And they were doing fun. In fact, they are coming for our technical meeting. They are coming for this interview. Okay, fine. So I'm still coming back to that question. Okay. Is passion alone enough to sustain a pest control business without funding? Uh, I think both of them they 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 go together. If you have passion for something, you will go all out for it. Because, like I said, uh, when I started my business, I tried to raise a fund of the ten thousand naira. Because that time, uh, a particular machine, which some of us are familiar with, uh, uh, no, this this street one, uh, okay, CP, yeah. CP, CP8. CP8, okay. thank you, CP8. Because I used to watch a lot of, uh, I picked my own idea from the international, because I always want to do something like them, especially this uh, OK pest control like that. So, and I saw the kind of equipment they are using, and I felt that ah, I won't be able to get it. So, I went to this guy, and I saw that particular one that looks like it. So uh, when I saw it, I got it, you know, that's passion. Then started small, 10,000 era to buy the equipment. After the equipment, I went on starving. And later I was able to get another job and I started building gradually. So, and later the rest is history now. If you have the money and you don't have passion, sometimes it, it doesn't work that way. Like some of the people that have left me, some of the staff that have left because they thought, wow, this man is making money. So if I go to stand on my own, I'll be making the same money. 
But sometimes, if God has given you a gift, because pest control industry is more or less like any other business industry that you just have to have passion and follow the normal procedure. You can't just arrive there in a day. For example, somebody asked me one day and he was asking me that, please, I, I want to do a business. And I asked the person, how much do you need? And he said, 1.5. And I said, when are you going to refund me? He said, six months. And I liked it and I laughed. And I was like, you're only deceiving yourself. By the time you get this 1.5 million, you will understand. You will not be able to deliver even the next one year or two years. So if you have passion towards that thing, you can start small. And when you start small, you will build a very strong foundation that will not be shaken. But if you go to the top, like those people, it, it's rare. I've seen some people that get into this business uh, because they have a lot of money. Now, if I invested 10 million era in a business, and the quarks are not really opening the business as well. Somebody called me some weeks back and he was telling me, please come and do fumigation of my house. And I gave the person deal. And he said, I would rather allow mosquito to be biting you, I will go out, buy big gun and things like that. And in fact, <laughs> I was also furious when he told me later that, okay, let me buy the chemical, then I will call you to come and ah, do the fumigation. Ah, you understand? So, you know, um, if you are the type of person that you have now invested like 15 million or thereabouts in that kind of business and you are hearing this, it can be frustrating. So that's why I believe that sometimes passion and fun, they go together. But you must have passion for it first before you begin to acquire money. Because if you get fun and you don't have passion, you will lose out. All right, so what has been your own biggest challenge? Basically, he, he said, they are, you know, keeping up with okay. innovative ideas. Staffing is not the biggest challenge. Okay. What do you consider as probably one of the biggest challenges of the pest control industry from your own personal experience and journey? Ah, there are so many challenges. There are so many challenges, but my starting was a very big, it, it, it was very difficult when I, when, when I started, you know, it, it, it got, because number one, even some of your close people then, they don't really believe in this uh, uh, business as a then. So uh, when you go to them, uh, I've seen a friend of mine tag my name as Kuku uh, Kuku. Mm. You, you understand? So it the, the, the beginning of the journey was very, very rough for me. So I would just say my starting point was very was a big challenge because it got to a stage that uh, somebody told me that you, you better go and look for a job because you are jobless. Because when your business is not doing well, you are actually jobless anyway. Mm. And he was telling me, go and look for a job, you are jobless and things like that. So it, it, it was a big challenge. That was the only challenge that I would say that, oh, it was very tough for me to, because it got to a stage, I even paused the business for a while. I, I disappeared. And later I reappeared again because my passion was uh, in it. And so that, that, that would be my biggest challenge, starting point. Mm, okay. So what you just said now, I can relate to it. One day I was, um, I was privileged to follow the official team to a client house. And he looked at me and he said, oh, young man, you speak very good English. Why are you doing this kind of business? And I laughed. You <laughs> that is like the, there's a misconception that the pest control business in Nigeria is for the downtrodden. Um, there's a misconception that the pest control business is just a means of survival. You know, it's not s mostly seen as a prosperous business. How have you been handling this area? I know your network now. I know <laughs> you are like the dangote of the pest control industry, or you are one of the dangote. <laughs> But how are you able to undo that impression from the customers looking down on you based on the nature of the business that you are doing? Okay, so um, I'm a man that is full of experience. So I'm just going to share a story of um, some clients some years back that told me, and this just explains um, the mindset of people towards the pest control industry. Uh, before now, before now, uh, I don't think anybody will make such statements now. But before now, um, and the statement was okay. So I we went to this particular client's place, and then, and then she told me, she said, "I like what you are doing. It's better than a grown-up man 
opening and closing gates. So for me, the catch was the comparison. So he looked at my job, and then he looked at the gate man's job, and felt so what good. you are doing is better than for a grown up opening and closing gates. So I said, thank you, man. You know. So that's to tell you, okay, the, I, I, I would have preferred, he says, oh, I like what you are doing. It's better than a banker going to work five, um, c, um, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, okay, so that would have given me some level of, I will lose my shoulder up, okay. So I'm kind of, at a, 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 <laughs> but today now, we have bankers living in the banking industry, community industry, to yeah. start first control. We have bankers coming in now to start first control. So it means that um, it's it's not people will have different perspectives. It, it all depends on your brand. It all depends on your how do you package yourself. It, it depends on a whole lot of. So some people will still be experienced because there are still um, certain guys because you have to come. There is no way in this Nigeria now. You have to come in small. You see, what I just said you came in with five thousand. I came in with. Uh, you came in with ten thousand. I came in with five thousand into the industry. That's all I came in with, you know. And today, God has blessed the 5,000. So now, um, so you have to come in small. So at that stage, that teaching stage, that initial stage, when people see you at that initial stage, of course, they will always be, are you sure? Are you sure? You know, like we still have some clients tell us now that this price you are charging, 2 million for what? And you know, people are plenty now. Have you heard that recently? <laughs> you know, you people are plenty now. As in, everybody is doing best control now. Sure, you know. Just give me your last price. Yes, I will check. You people are plenty now. <laughs> and, you know, that's what we are hearing now. You people are plenty now. There was a time that we were not plenty. Yeah. Pretty much was in uh, Oba. 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 I don't think about the Akure story. I think about the Oba story. Uh, you know. And, uh, you know, so, uh, first of I was in Shomoyu, so it was, so at that time, we were not so much, we were just a few. Yeah, we were in Yanopaja. Yanopaja, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's, it's, so, but now, the perception of the populace of our first control is shifting bit by bit, so, and that's why, and you see, the example I gave is just to tell you that the, um, and the narrative is changing. You don't just come in and because somebody comes to fumigate your house and you pump in 10, 15 million of your money into the industry, it doesn't happen anyway. It doesn't happen. It's not so it means that people are now seeing that oh, there's prospect in this thing. And the truth is, first control industry, if it's like um, 100%, we are just at five, seven, eight percent. Yeah, we are just at five, seven, eight percent. We've not even done anything at all but we need to rebrand we need to innovate to even cover 20 percent of what is happening in the industry mm. from this narrative mm. um organic growth is the best way to grow businesses yeah. mm-hmm. now if you're going to advise because uh, most times we have people coming to business and suddenly just want to be at the peak of you know yeah. They want to come in in two, three months. They want to be rivaling with. Uh, we've seen this. We have seen people maybe relocate from abroad, come to Nigeria. I think it's all about money, uh, <laughs> posting every minute and all that. You understand? Know, Not understanding that you must grow your brand to be relevant in the industry. So they're going to advise a startup pest control company mm-hmm. based on what they just said about organic growth. What would be your advice for somebody that is just coming in newly to the business of pest control? Okay. Uh First of all, I will advise the person to just go through training. And uh, if you are privileged to work with uh, a pest control company that has hired you and they train you, um, I will advise the person also to be lawyer. And uh, because sometimes when you go to a place to work and the person pour everything, just like uh, Barbara said, Somebody pour out everything on you, and you now took what the person as uh, probably to another place without a proper uh, maybe uh, uh, disengagement. You understand? 
it can affect you on your journey as well. Then secondly, most of, I will just give an example, like people that have departed from me, that they are also MDA and CEO. They just want to arrive where you are, just like that. They have, they've forgotten that you started from the scratch. And so when they are not getting what you are trying to, what, what they thought they would be getting, then you will see them fade away within a short while. Uh, some of them are not doing well. Some of them are doing well. You understand? So sometimes there's a game of luck too in the business as well. Then you need to just start from the scratch. You need to build your database. You need to build your customer base so that when you get up there, you will not have any problem. Uh, it's true. People are going on the internet right now. You know, some people just believe they just go on the internet. You'll be able to get uh, customers and things like that. Even the customer wants to listen to you speak. They want to know whether you have experience. They want to know how you want to sort out the problem. And don't forget that sometimes some of these people that we train, we bring some of them from very low, you understand. Then uh, the aspect where you put them might be in operation. Sometimes some of them are not even in the admin. They don't really know how the business is actually being run. So, because they know how to do it, I used to say something that come, there are so many people out there that knows how to do fumigation. But not all of them are doing well with the business because you need to have passion and you need to have an idea or a, a creativity and things like that. So, if you go and you don't have such a thing, that means you are not ripe enough to leave your master or that means you are not ripe enough to just go into it. Just get more knowledge and let your customer be uh, uh start from the scratch and so that you be very strong because there are times that you do all this marketing and the rest and nothing will come for you and you'll be surprised that one customer that you have served some probably years back will be the one to call to call you back uh from even with all of us we will know that sometimes your old customers are still loyal to you and they will still call you anytime any day and they will also link you up to another people. So my advice for them is to start small. Because if you go and get a loan or big money to you'll be frustrated out. Thank you. All right. So you you both spoken so well about the pest control industry of Nigeria. You spoken uh, very well and you made it look so glamorous, even though it's also glamorous. Um, luckily enough I know that you are both fathers. Yes, I know that part of you, that family aspect of your head. Yeah. And uh, nowadays, when you see your kids go to school for, they call it costume days. They dress in the medical attire, some legal profession, you know. I, you understand what I'm trying to say? Yeah. So, to see your hobby, your son, I know you have a son. You know, tomorrow, will you be very proud of him saying, Daddy, first country is where. I want to stay. This is what I want to do. I don't want to be a pilot. I don't want to be an aeronautical engineer. I don't want to be an engineer. I want to continue from where you stop running after rats and mosquitoes in Lagos as a full time profession. Will you be proud of him with that decision from what you have achieved so far? Well, um, I remember the. Um, what do you call the name again? You mentioned it just now. Um, where they dress them up for different professions too. Yes, I should be. Yeah, yes. yeah. So I dress my son, I think my son or my daughter, I can't remember if it has been a while. So I dressed her, him or her, I can't remember exactly, but she she dressed up as a press control. I was actually she planning that, and I thought that would be the first one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you got know that already. Uh, okay, okay, I'll be the second person. <laughs> <laughs> so I gave her um, safety goggle, gave her nose mask. We did that overall for her, and then she went in and said, I'm a best control technician. Uh -huh. So, um, so the truth is, uh, it's a decision, it's their personal decision, and there's nothing they want to do that I will not be part of. There's nothing. So far, this is uh, legal, and it's, um, it's dignifying. Uh, industry is very, very, it's an industry that people, it, we are meeting needs. Do you know that um, the shell body of cockroaches trigger asthma in children? So we are saving lives. Um, safety goggles, give her mask, 
we do that over our farm, and then she went to and say, I'm a best control technician. Uh -huh. So, um, so the truth is, uh, it's a decision, it's their personal decision, and there's nothing they want to do that I will not be proud of. So it's nothing. So far, this is uh, legal and it's, um, it's dignifying. Uh, industry is very, very, it's an industry that people, if we are meeting needs, do you know that um, the shell body of cockroaches trigger asthma in children? Mm -hmm. So we are saving lives. Do you know how many disease that um, some of these rats carry? Do you, so we are eradicating, we are, we are um, proactive, so we don't have outbreak of um, some of these things that some of some of so, some people here in this studio probably should be having malaria by now, but some of us will be able to eradicate the the, 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 the mosquito that's going to be supposed to give them malaria next next year. Do you get what I'm saying? So what I'm just saying is um it's an industry that we are meeting basic needs. And that's why if if we um if we don't have value we are adding to the human life, then definitely there will be no money to be made. So uh, I feel I'm going to be super proud if any of my son has said, okay, dad, I want to take it to the next level. You just have to take it to the next level. Whereby maybe at, at maybe at their own time, it's drones that they will send it to people's home rather than you driving this um, robotics coming to play, you know, and then robotics can immediate. Today now we are using second generation article and we are waiting for 10 days, 5 days to have the rats dead. Maybe by that time there will be something that will just take the rat out of the house and take them outside. Because I always tell people when the pest is outside, there are no pests. It is when they enter into your space that they become pests. Yeah. So if the rat is outside, it's no pest to you. Because this is, they have things they are doing. There's a reason why they are here. There's a reason why God created them. But it's when they enter into your space and begin to do some damages, or they enter into your compound, then that's when. They become pest. Thank so you that's, so much. That's you share the same belief. Your kids, you would like, you like them to probably go into pest control as a permanent means of uh, survival. Yes, sir. I I share the same thing with him because uh, I didn't go get into this business because I don't believe in it. You understand? And uh, we save life. Our industry is also very very important. Anything environmental is very very important and i used to tell my staff that look at us very well very soon we will be gone and this company has come to stay so if you are having that kind of a belief then you my kids i used to tell them that tomorrow you will take over from me <laughs> you understand even if he or she decided to come and change, you know, our agreement later, that will not be my problem. But I used to, like, encourage them that whatever I'm doing right now is for the future. At least the man that had uh, this KFC is no more, but the company is still there. So our motive is actually to continue helping everyone to, to control pests. That's why we are here. Uh, it's not all about the money. It is what you are giving to the society. Then later money will come in, sure. But don't forget what you are doing. You want to help people. And you will not say that, okay, maybe after I've gotten a lot of money and things like that, then I want to leave that kind of industry. No. So if my children are coming in the future and they want to continue from where I've stopped, in fact, I'll be the happiest man or not. All right. So if you have just said that um, truly bankers are coming into pest control industry, yeah. A lot of other professions are coming into pest control business now. Uh, do you see it as um, maybe out of frustration of viability of the pest control industry of Nigeria in terms of, you know, revenue? You understand? Yeah. When a banker can leave the bank and say, I want to be running after rats, I want to be running after cockroaches. Is this something you see like, oh, it's because of, you know, what the interest, what they tend to gain, or maybe because of the economic condition of Nigeria? Is pest control has it got to that glamorous stage where someone can leave the comfort of a banking sector to say I want to come and run after big Uh Yes, it has got into that stage. I've uh, made people to see 
that is not a job that you can rule out in the society. Uh, uh, you can see that, okay, there was a time also that uh, I, I was privileged to go to a particular place and the person was trying to interview me. Uh, I just don't want to go deep into it. And the person asked me that, how much is my revenue? Actually, the person was just trying to ridicule me anyway. So what do you do? I said, pest control. Pest, pest, pest control? I said, yes, fumigation. Because that then people don't really call it pest control. <laughs> you just tell them fumigation. That's when they will understand. So, and the person looked at me and he said, uh, fumigation? I said, yes. Those that kills rats and things like that? I said, yes. I said, so how much do you earn in a month? So, and I told her. And she was shocked. And she now said, even some bankers are not earning up to this amount of money on monthly basis. Are you serious? I said, yes. So you can imagine somebody like that going home and maybe he, she has a banker at home and you're like, you, you better know what you are doing. Somebody just told me that he's getting a revenue of a turnover of so so amount of money. You looking at money every day yeah. in large volume. In large Come volume. Make the real money. Come make the real money. So, people that are coming in, I will not blame them, but most times, like we said earlier, they need to have passion, not because of the money. If you come in because of the money and you are not getting that money when uh, you, you come in, you can be frustrated out. Thank you. Um, Pest Control Association of Nigeria, PICAN, is uh, the only association of pest controllers in Nigeria. Um, currently, uh, the headed by PCO Kuli Williams. They've been involved in so many um, projects that have been pushing the industry forward. And uh, PCO Abi, you are a very notable member of that association. And I want to put it to you, you benefited so much. Can you share with um, uh, prospective pest controllers that are uh, planning to be or joining the association uh, most possible benefit of being a member of that association, which already you have also benefited from? Um, I think it's um, the knowledge sharing at the monthly um, monthly meetings. meetings. Okay. Yes. Monthly meetings of the um, pest control CEOs in the industry. Um, it's a meeting where you can bring whatever issues you are having and then share it among your colleagues and then they will prefer solution, no matter what the pest is, even if it's alligator, somebody has faced it before. Mm. You get so that and that's the beauty of um, associations. You leverage on other people's experience, you know. You don't have to have uh, use the same strategy that I, I used, you can build on what I used. Um, there are some people that have cat problem in their people in the association that have faced many different kind of cat um, problems. So, so what we do is we share knowledge from our uh, um, world of experience, so you don't have to face the kind of struggle we faced when we were coming up. So that's that's one of the beauty of uh, I would say of the association. Okay, thank yes. you. Um, to PCO Ebenezer, uh, EOE Environmental uh, Pest Control Services Limited is Oricon certified. And to be very honest, Oricon is the peak when it comes to licensing and certification in the pest control industry of Nigeria. When you are Oricon certified, you know that yes, you are, you are up there. Um, the process of getting this Oricon license, was it seamless to you and what's is your advice for pest controllers that are also trying to to get certified by by Oregon? Uh, well, uh, it's uh, it's not that difficult when you want to. It's just that if you don't have an idea on how to start, and that's why I said that uh, where you take your training matters a lot, and uh, probably the person you have worked with also is important. So the person will guide you and put you through. But however, if you want to get your aircon, all you need to do is just to go for the training. When you get to the training, uh, all these process will be 
uh, made available for you because uh, there are some procedure, there are some requirement that is expected of you as well because it's a company that you are registering. So they want to see that you have registered the company. They want to know that you have an office. They want to know that uh, how you want, you have the equipment. They want to know whether you have uh, uh, really studied on that someone that is uh, experienced and licensed. Uh, before the once you have all those criteria to get your uh your approval it's not that difficult all right so just like we have heard from pcu and Beniza, it's not as difficult as we feel or as we always imagine to be or recon certified to do pest control business in nigeria the first step is to be already certified that is the federal agency that is in charge of regulation when it comes to pest control business my final question is that this is the final question during covid a lot of pest control business make money the entertainment industry was crippled. Uh, the band guys were in the house. The entertainment guys they were in the house, hotels. But pest control business, you know, was at the forefront of revenue generation at the peak of business. Please be honest with us. How much did you make during COVID? Wow. <laughs> don't, 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 don't worry. We know that you might have invested in other things. <laughs> We're not coming for it. But just tell us, maybe 35. 50 million, 100 million. Wow, wow, Roto has not keep you. Actually, uh, COVID. It's very easy, 200 million. 200 million. Yes. All right. Wow. So, uh, uh, initially, we're looking yeah. for sponsor for the table tennis. <laughs> Thank you so much. But from <laughs> now, this plate base. Now, <laughs> now we have gotten one. We are not looking for sponsor. <laughs> We have a sponsor for the upcoming yeah. tennis tournament for the pest control. Yeah, so. uh, for us, we are the organizers. Yes, we cannot but, sponsor ourselves. Yeah, we can sponsor ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> we have to do for outside sponsors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, how lucrative was that period for you? Ah, uh, that that period was a, a period that uh, people get to know that pest control uh, technicians or business we are not that useless. It was that time that people were now clamoring that do we have pest control people in this country? Do we have fumigators in this country? And uh, that was just like an eye opening for everyone that have ridiculed us so far that uh, what are they doing? So they got the importance of our job that particular time. So it was a turning point for every pest control company. Thank you. Sir, what was COVID-19? What 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 does what did COVID nineteen brought to pest masters? First, first of all, I want to ask you a question. Yeah. yeah. During COVID, did you go to any place that has been confirmed with COVID cases and were your boys scared to go yeah. back home? <laughs> I, I, I experienced that too. No, I experienced that. <laughs> Are you scared? I, I don't know if I should mention the name of the customer. They are they are they are one of the biggest FMCGs in Nigeria. Um they engage Indians mostly. And uh, when you follow the COVID story in Nigeria, the first casualties we have were uh, expatriates, Indians and mm -hmm. all that. So this company lost about two staff. I remember going to Bejuleki, getting to the facilities and uh, seeing facilities cut on off. And I was asked to go in to go and inspect. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and in my mind, I was thinking, Oga, is this what? But no, this is what I signed for. Mm -hmm. You understand? You know, this is NCDC, has, they came around put the red tape and say nobody should go in and they say oh you are the disinfect yeah, disinfectant uh, or disinfection expert yeah. you have to go in and assess and give us you know it was a very scary experience but i went in they uh, were protected with uh, um, protected with ppes but let me tell you the funniest part i lost the job at the end of this despite the risk of going that far you know but you know we were almost everywhere that time and uh, to be very honest with you i can say that Rotimas uh, also made fortune during COVID. In fact, to some extent, it's a mixed feelings for us when COVID, COVID was going. <laughs> <laughs> I must be honest with you. Uh, it was a mixed feelings. Left to me, you know, thank God, probably I don't know anybody close. Maybe that's the reason why. But still, to me, I feel like, oh, maybe this should have stayed more for one year. Let's still gather some things more. Because uh, it looks like we're back to where we used to be before COVID. Do you agree with me? Like, space control had gone back because I thought COVID was supposed to push us you know, like people already, the awareness level has gone very higher. You know, do you think that we're still, what do you think have made us be able to, because for the first time we saw state government procuring pest control equipment, you know, uh, local government procuring equipment, you know, government getting involved, they're not going, doing it so right. 
But now everything has gone back. You know, is there anything we need to do to make sure that we can still maintain that same thing? I don't agree that everything has gone back to the way it was pre-COVID. No, it's not. For example, now we pay more money to local government. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I'm talking about revenue generation. Uh, no, it's still revenue generation. We are paying more money now. Now, uh, with respect to the publicity, the um, the need and the urgency for um, companies to... There are some companies before that, they will tell you we only want fundation once a year. But now, they are open to doing two, three times a year. It's because of, oh, see, let's just avoid all these things. Because so many companies can't even see the differentiate between disinfection and fumigation. Uh, fumigation yeah. You get. So, I won't say... We've gone back to, but it can't be the same. Don't yeah, yeah. Of course, it can't be. It can't be the same kind of revenue generation we experienced. Don't there was United. fear that time. There was fear that time. So fear was driving the spending, but now there's no more fear. But now there's no more fear. You get so that's what I feel. I feel we should. Um, so the need for pest control. I mean, even some homes that they've not fumigated for a very long time. Some offices that have just been so, um, you know, surviving. The um, the enforcement from the local government is on a different level altogether now. Okay. You know, it's on a different level altogether. So it's not the same. It's just that it's when you compare it with what was obtainable during COVID, then you feel like everything has gone back to the way it was before before COVID. No, but it's not. You can't even you can't get to that level anymore. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. I used to know it before COVID. Now you are not like this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, that's good. So, um, for in our society, pest control mostly um, comes up at the verge of maybe emergency and fear. You know, we don't see it as a necessity. You know, like the Western countries where everybody sees that you know something you need to do um, exactly. exactly time to time and all that. You know, so for some of um, the customers or people that feel like you only need to call the pest controller when there is um, an emergency or you, yeah. you, you see a bed bug, that's the only thing that you need pest, uh, pest control or mm. maybe you see snake. So what advice do you have uh, for them um, regarding the dangers of presence of pests in their homes? Uh, yeah, my advice to them is that uh, when my uh, business started actually, what we're trying to do is uh, uh, try to offer uh, eco-friendly uh, pest control services which means that using uh, some of the product that are really really eco-friendly some people don't want to do fumigation because they are scared of the chemicals and things like that so we were trying to like bring in materials that can be friendly with human but harmful to to pest but before you can achieve such a thing you need to be doing your fumigation regularly and uh let's just say quarterly every three three months but in most cases in nigeria we don't really uh consider that we only call for pest control technician when the problem has really gotten out of hand and sometimes this pest did not enter into your house in a day you can't expect all of them to go at once so sometimes it, it gives us a lot of job like a follow-up service ensuring asking the customer used to say then you go back and things like that but if they do pest control on a regular basis it will reduce the number of chemicals that is being introduced into your house because the the pest control technician will just go to the specific area and try to give you a a, a preventive measure and advice like that and before you know it you will not be endangering the life of your uh, family because you want to fumigate let me tell you something. If you get to a particular area where the infestation is so high, you have no choice than to also, you know, do something nasty because the infestation is high. But when the infestation is still minimal that you can manage, then you can use less material to control it and everybody will be fine. Thank you so much.
welcome back guys it's still pet podcast niger where we are focused on telling the african story african pest story mind you the african way i'm going to start by asking pcu abby this question now um the western world they really don't relate with how we control pests especially most of the things bordering we africans so what do you think is the correlation or how do we um, manage pest control in africa in correlation to the pest control management practices by the western world okay so um thank you very much for the question what i will say is um we have a different kind of um, pests problems we face in Africa compared to the European countries to the Western world. Um, there are so many things that are pest to us here that we don't even know yeah. exist over there. And that's why you see some of our kids that were born in the Western world come to Nigeria and then you see, they see, you see, daddy, daddy, see lizard, lizard. <laughs> As in, they've never seen lizard before all their life. So, um, and the same thing goes with, um, Mosquitoes, it's a big issue for them then when someone breaks down say they have malaria. How? Because they've been able to conquer malaria, uh, mosquito infestation, mosquitoes activities in their society. So it's a different ballgame. And that's why you see that some, so many pesticides that we use around here, they are strange to them over there. Mm. And that's um, why some of their pesticides, when we bring it here, you see customers still complaining and then sometimes... Uh, we we'll say the kind of place that we have in Nigeria have a dish here. So you can you cannot come and use a jebota chemical for them and all of that. You know, that's just by the way. Uh, but what I will say is um the we are catching up here because we have bigger press problems. So we are catching up here. Our approach we are becoming tilted. And <coughs> the only thing that we are working on is with respect to this safety thing. Um, an average pest control technician will tell you, oh, I don't even need to wear a glove. You know, it's no big deal so far. I'm not inhaling chemical and all of that. Okay, so when I started some years ago, I actually fainted. Really? Tell yeah, me that story. I fainted at a particular site. That was maybe my first year or my second year. I can't remember. Really, but I know I fainted. I know they took me to the hospital. I know I had gas. I had to breathe with, you know, gas. And I remember, I still remember the chemical, but I'm not going to say the name of the chemical that <laughs> got me passed out. <laughs> so, um, so I, I passed out and I was rushed to the hospital. I think the hospital is on um, Allen. And then um, I was, I had gas, in fact, they saved my life and I, I was able to recuperate, you know, after a while. Um, I could. I, I I was breathing through the aid of um, this particular machine, and what happened is I did not have the right protective equipment mm. on, you know, and that's what happens. And you know, my mentality there, you know, because I was still you know young in the industry, and you know, I don't you know, I, I do this thing every day now. So the chemicals already know me. I already know the chemicals, and that's a very bad. And that's what um, the the Western press control technicians will not do, you know. And the truth is, there are so many things that, so many pesticides are already banned over there that they don't, they don't, they've been banned since 1990. The, um, the force of this war that we still have on the shelf of some of the big supermarkets in Nigeria, mm -hmm. they've been banned over there. You know, since 1990, they, they cannot smell European country. They cannot smell, you know, America. And yet, we use them here on a daily basis. So, what I feel is, um, we are getting the, the the information is coming out. And so many people now have seen the need to get um, proper training, you know, from different houses, like Ultimax um, training company and all of that. So, they are coming in with the knowledge, not just coming in, Anyhow, we're coming with the requisite knowledge and we believe that in no time we'll be able to catch up with the level of knowledge and the level of expertise that is obtained in the, um, the Western world. Yeah, thank you very much. And when you come to you, now you said that one of the biggest challenges that you had when you were in the business in the early days is actually the early days. That's like the major challenge yeah, that you had. Yeah, yeah. So like, how would you um, advise or speak to people that are trying to get into the pest control you know business and 
how do they identify viable business opportunity in the pest control you know, industry now, given the level of knowledge and experience you've gathered? Uh, uh, they, like I said, uh, most of them, if you are coming in as a new person, number one, you need to uh, go for training and which uh, Rotimas is actually doing well and helping a lot of people right now to, to do that. Then if you find yourself working in also an organization, because sometimes the, the pest control company these days too, they recruit, even if you have uh, no experience, because they are going to train you, they are going to uh, put you through. And uh, once you get that experience, then you can start small. Uh, you can start growing gradually till you will get there. But there are so many challenges that you are still going to face, which it is normal in any business. You can't just get into any business and just want to be going like that. You know, don't let me go biblically, but you, the seed must be sown into the soil first. And it has to die first before it will start germinating. So any business that you want to do and you want to be successful, you should respect that so that that will not discourage you from pursuing your goal. I had a similar experience that I was discouraged, even with my 10,000 era that I started with. I felt that this thing is still not working, but I now, I now realize that you just have to allow the seed to die first. Then it will start coming up. So you will still get there. Just keep believing. Major word of wisdom there. Let the seeds die first let it die first things down <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay now um, building on that and all the years you've had in the industry you've been here for over a decade yes what will you say is your major accomplishment so far as i mean eoa the big brand ah <sighs> uh well i will say uh two hmm. i will mention two okay and uh, the first one that I will mention was that when I started this business, I thought I was alone. Mm. I thought I was alone. I thought I was the only person in the industry. So until when uh, Rotimas organized one program like that, and I decided, let me go and see what they are doing. And I saw him for the very first time that day. And when he was, I said, wow, me and this man, we share the same... Uh, we share the same CV, we, we share the same notes. So I thought I was the only one. So meeting him also helped me a lot because we do talk together. Then another one that I would say was my biggest achievement was the day I went to uh, Ojota to buy some of these chemicals mm -hmm. and I was wearing my uh, uniform. And one lady saw me and she was screaming, EOA, EOA, and I was like, do I know you from anywhere? And she said, ah, no, I used to follow your website. I used to read a lot of uh, how to control pests on your page and things like that. Uh, are you guys from abroad? I said, no. Aww. That I'm from Nigeria. He said, no, you are lying. That is like you came from abroad. I said, no. We started from Nigeria. And I not even have the opportunity to grant the pest control in abroad. So when I left that particular area, I was so happy, like at least some people, uh, they, they are reading our stuff on the internet and they thought that uh, it's only in abroad that you can uh, give that kind of service. Whereas we, we in Nigeria as well, we are doing much better. You're doing amazing. Yeah, yeah. You're doing amazing. This is your Abbey, can you add to that? Like what's your, from your own and your experience and so far, what's the biggest accomplishment? Uh, for me, uh, in simple terms, it's basically empowerment. Um, it's just empowerment. Um, I've had someone that was my classmate in school who was struggling financially, brought into this industry, and he has stabilized. Yeah, I was. Um, I've had um, some of the biggest brands you see around here pass through my tutelage. You know, so for me, that's that's. If I start sharing the story, I start having good people. So it's it's oh. just unbelievable, you know. Some of the things some of these people achieve, and you know, the beauty of it all is, um, a lot of them are very appreciative. That thank you, thank you for the opportunity, because um, I allow them go with my blessings, no matter 
that's why I said the one that was even post is coming for our events, you know, because I always keep the room open that say nobody's outside anybody forever. Yeah. And anything I can do to help you, once you are ready to go, at any time you are ready to go, please feel free. So that other people can other people can even come in. So for me that's the biggest achievement because they bought me suit, they bought bag of rice in my house, they bought different different things, December's like this. They're always chasing me. Oh, Gary, are you? We are bringing the, you know. So I'm just happy that, you know, and God, and I pray f- for them from the bottom of my heart. And I always tell them, you're bigger than me. You know, so for me, that's, that's, that's it for me. That's the, that's what I feel I'll be remembered for that. I went into something that I did not know anything about. And um, I made it and other people are making it because so that's that's it. Thank you. So um he already said that you would advise startup businesses to first off let their seed that they planted die and then wait for it to you know rise. Mm-hmm. But COVID nineteen, the pandemic happened and people are still <laughs> trying to get into the business, right? But following that, you know how it affected almost everything, economics and all of that. I want to ask you, do you think the pest control industry industry is still as profitable for starters, I mean, can they still come? How has COVID nineteen affected the profitability of the first control control industry? Okay, um, what I will tell you is everything that COVID nineteen touched mm-hmm. never remained the same again. Yeah. And same thing with first control industry. Everything COVID nineteen touched never remained the same again. I know some some of my client, clients that. Um, they can never go back to their former state again. So COVID nineteen opened us up, opened the pest control industry up, and then just like a um, rubber band that um, had experienced elasticity, has been stretched. You know, it can't go back to the original state again. You, it, it might shrink, and like like because it was stretched to the minimum, so it can even when it comes back, you will see that it's bigger than the former state or the brand new states, you know. And that's exactly so. Now, reality is coming. Some people that came in into the industry just to make money, opportunity to make money, do disinfection, do pest control and all of that. Some of them are going out, some of them are selling their equipment to us, you know. I just bought (laughs) But the truth is, Mm -hmm. like a rubber band Mm -hmm. that stretches. You, it can't be the same by the time, even as those people are coming out and the rubber band is coming back, it's still at that state that is far bigger than where it used to be pre COVID. Yeah. You know, so um, so COVID opened us up, brought a lot of people into the industry. Some people are sustaining it, they are sustaining the momentum, and some people are um, looking for ways to innovate and stay afloat. Now that COVID, because uh, well, a lot of people. And not heavy on disinfection again. Disinfection service is going <laughs> gradually, you know. If I ask uh, everybody now, when well, like, they do disinfection service, maybe <laughs> the rate has dropped a bit. So, uh, because people are saying COVID, COVID is no more the, the, the tension, the, you know, urgency has really died down. But COVID-19 opened us up, opened our industry up and, um, we hope to just build on it to sensitize the the, the um, populace and see what we can do to just leverage on some of the benefits that came into our industry as a result of COVID nineteen. Okay. Mm. Okay. Thank you, Peace Your Ebenezer. You mentioned that one of the biggest things that happened is the fact that you realized that it's not just you in the industry. Yeah. I want to build on that to ask you this. How do you see, or what is your take on collaboration among pest control managers, you know, in the industry? What's your, how do you see that? Yeah, uh, it's a very good uh, development, like uh, what we are doing now. Uh, when you are in an industry and you feel that probably you are the only one, there are times that you can run out of ideas that you will need your colleague, you know, to put you through and things like that. So it is very good for you to collaborate with your your colleague especially in the same uh, uh, organization yeah so that it will help you you know moving forward in your business what about concerning project execution 
collaboration between yeah 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 uh yeah uh yeah that's also uh a very good one especially under uh, you know it has to be with uh, a, a relationship you understand because sometimes if you are given a project that is actually bigger than what you can handle alone you know you can call your colleague to join you and things like that rub mice together you know use some equipment and things like that so it's a, it's a very it will be a very good one when you collaborate with your colleague okay now pest control some people have phobias right someone like me if i see some certain animals i definitely am screaming so have you encountered something like that in the process of you know doing these things a particular pest that you dread so much that if you know you're going to you know execute the project you are wondering in your head i hope i don't come across this pest okay yeah. so i'll share a very short story yeah. <clears throat> okay so um we had this client um that called many years ago still and um i went with my boys to see they say we saw a snake in our flat and the flat was in i think my good day um, so the client called and said, we saw a snake um, and they were scared. So I said, okay, guys, let's go in. And uh, we went in. And then when we, as soon as we got in, we went to the master bedroom. It's a two bedroom flat downstairs. And then we saw this snake, very big. I saw it. The, okay, so the... Um, the wife mm -hmm. of the man followed us to show us the area where they felt they saw something. Okay. okay, they were not sure, but we saw something, but we are not sure it was very fast. Okay. And then, so we wanted to, she wanted to show me where the, so she followed me. As soon as we enter into the master bedroom, close to the bathroom, this big serpent just, you know, came up and was, <laughs> the woman just pushed me. My phone that me I was I wanted to use for she felt the phone the whole for the battery everything scattered anywhere me too I just picked my thing I will run <laughs> 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 the most run out of the plant you <laughs> know I, I called you to run out I never had the kind of fear that is in you you pass it to me <laughs> you know. So, uh, so we all ran out of the place, you know. I have phobia for snakes, mm -hmm. you know, but I told her, I said, I didn't have chemical, I didn't have any machine. I'm not supposed to not face I'm not an aboki now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, uh, so we, there are some, you know, pests like that, that um, I actually have phobia for that. I would rather confront them with, um, and it, they are the ones that are poisonous and dangerous, mm -hmm. you know, that's, well, it's like shrew too, you know, sometimes you don't want to be too aggressive around the shrew as a pest. So, um, so that's, that's basically it. That's the story. Do you share this with the Does this make for you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually, uh, there's no pest control technician that we hear about snake that will not, first of all, pause. <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> Calm down, because that's actually, uh, but if you look at it very well, it's a wild animal. Mm. You cannot really put them, they don't really fit in into household pests. Okay. Uh, because uh, this is just wild animal coming in place. And even in abroad too, we have some people that are in charge of wild animal like that. For example, if you have lion in your house and you call pest control technician, that's a suicide mission because you might not be trained to handle mm -hmm. such animal. So we are actually trained, but uh, from our research, because our business, you don't have to stay in one place, you just have to keep doing it because you look at your society, you look at your environment, look at what uh, the major problem they have. And this snake is common in our area, either you want it or not. Some people channel their drainage system to the gutter area where the snake can now come into their toilet and there will be a problem. So if you don't do your proper uh, seaway, you understand, you, you might have problem with snake. And I've experienced one also like that. Uh, I don't want to mention the name of the organization. Uh, it was a very big forest that they just wanted to look like uh, a normal uh, forest and they want to control snake. You can imagine that kind of scenario. 
I told them that they are going to face this one. They said, no, they are not facing it. They want it to look like a real forest. Natural, thank you. They want it natural. And while we were going for an inspection, I saw monkeys jumping up and down. And one of my staff, you know, that, that studied snake very well, now started explaining more about snake, you know, to me as we were trying to like feel like a macho man, you understand? And he was saying that uh, even under where we are, the snakes are walking. Ah, I first of all checked where I was standing. Then later, the, the person has said that we need to go to one particular area where they used to see them actually. And I said, okay, what type of snake have you been seeing around there? He said, uh, python, big one, that they have even caught one swallowing uh, monkeys. And I said, okay, that's fine. We don't need to go there. I've seen it from distance. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, you know, we have seen it from there. So don't worry. And I left the area. And I gave them a deal that they will not be able to call me back. <laughs> So sometimes a uh, snake. Yeah, you yeah. shy from them. So what are common pests that you um you know do with this today and you know that okay, these are easy? Okay, uh even let me just start from that snake as well. It is controllable. You understand? It, it, like you, you, pest control is that it's not all about killing the pest actually. It's about you stopping them from coming into that particular territory. Mm -hmm. So you control them. You put a preventive measure in place. So even for the snake, you can control them by taking things that are inviting them into your home away, such as rodents, maybe a pile of uh, bush and all those stuff around you. Then the major pest control, you know, we have cockroaches, we have rats, we have... Uh, uh, we have scorpion, we have mosquitoes, and all these pests that I just mentioned too, they are in different categories. You can have rats, you can have mice, you can have German cockroaches, you can have uh, American cockroaches, you know, so many of them like that, uh, and which we do perfectly well. Okay. But the, po the thing is that you need to understand all these pests, their behavior, the way they reason, the way they move, for you to be able to control them effectively. Okay. Yeah. Okay, no answer. Um, so the thing is this pest control is in two methods, yeah. right? There is the professional one that you do, mm -hmm. and we have the DIY method. So if you want to talk to a homeowner or a homeowner who does not really have access to the professional professional, what can we do as homeowners in our own right to at least take care of that environment. I know you mentioned the sewage channeling and yeah. how can we, you know, limit that first? How do we help ourselves? Okay, so I go first, right? Okay, so um, the first thing I always tell homeowners um, is access control. Access control. Um, you don't control pests without access control. Um, the major common pest you know, around here is rats and they migrate a lot. German cockroaches don't migrate as such. You actually transport those. Um, you have American cockroaches, you know, you have um, um, centipede millipedes, you know, and all of those things. Now, you must have, especially because the major four out of five clients are having issues with either rats or cockroaches. Okay. So either rats or cockroaches, you know. So you have to, as homeowners, you have to check are there spaces for some of these things to creep into my space? So you need to have that checked out. Then of course you check what um what's my behavior like to my to my dust and be my um my waste. Do I have, uh, the, yes, what, what do I have enclosed containers that, you know, what's my, what's my disposition with respect to my dishes? Do I leave them in the sink overnight? You know, so there are some certain questions that homeowners need to answer. There are certain steps they need to take to be able to make the environment not conducive for pests. And then, of course, there are natural um, things like um, that you can put around your house that has also helped to keep 
or deter pests from you know, breeding. The truth is, um, like somebody said, you cannot stop a bird from flying over your head, but you can stop them from breeding a nest there. You know, so there is no way you can stop mosquito from coming around your house, and you know, but you can stop them from building a colony in your house. So, uh, but there are measures, there are things you need to take. And I was telling the, um, I was telling a friend of mine last um, week that uh, why are you keeping these um, new styles in your in your compound? They are retaining water, and once they retain water, that's a big um, breeding nest for mosquitoes. So just display you're not using them again. Display them, you know, and that's exactly what um, he did immediately. So those are so there are some basic basic things that you need to put in place. As soon as you have those in place, you can be sure that pests might come around. But for example, someone is putting plywood, use plywood from that remove from his house, or when he change when he's keeping it. Those are the things that snakes when they come in, they are looking for a place to have it. And then when they see such things. They want to so there are you need to make sure there are no spaces for anything to hide and then your nets are okay and then of course you cannot get it's when there is no space for mosquito to enter that you're free to walk if you fleet now as you are coming in from the from the company you want to pick something you just finish fleeting the fresh one will come in and those um pesticides they don't have um residual effect so once fresh mosquito will come you say ah this already is not working again. <laughs> you know, so you that's know why you brought them in. Why you brought them in. So what, what do you what do you say to home owners? Uh yeah, oh, well, home owners they can approach their pest control in two ways. Uh they can either do it themselves and let me tell you, majority of them have always tried to do it themselves. It is when some of them are unable to do it themselves that they will call a pest control technician to come and help them. But even if you are to do it yourself, you need to observe, uh, have an understanding of the kind of pest you are trying to control. You need to know uh, your major challenge and you need to know what is actually bringing them into your house. Because some people, even when you go to they invite a professional to come and do fumigation for them, uh, you see them after the service, they open their windows and another mosquito will come in and there will be a problem starting all over again. So uh, they need to also learn about the press challenges they are having and find a better way of controlling it. Okay. Then if they cannot do that on their home, then they can also call a pest control technician, especially in the aspect of chemicals. Some of them would, like these days now, you see people walk into a supermarket, buy snipers, buy all these things. At the end of the day, they endanger their, their own life, they endanger their family's life, all because they are trying to beat the cost. You understand? So they have to be very careful and let a certified pest control technician handle the chemicals that will be used in their residential area. Thank you. So finally, 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 I want to ask a question to both of you. And I want to hear a yes or a no. Right. Have you, in all your years of pest control, I mean, I think it's going to be a yes, but have you had an encounter with a client that you know you did a good job for? You know, it's not like they were not willing to pay or whatever. You had a great agreement, they paid. You did an excellent job, but for one reason or the other, they are dissatisfied. Excellent job, but for one reason or the other, they are dissatisfied. dissatisfied. Oh, goodness. What's that English? They are angry. Uh, dissatisfied. Yes. Yeah. You have. Uh, I have. Yes, I. If I have more correctly. <laughs> <laughs> you always have. Yeah, you know, like, <laughs> I, that's why I said I feel like it's going to be a yes answer. Yeah. So, um, quickly, quickly, under a few minutes, yeah. I want you to tell me how you handle such. Uh, some are very difficult to handle, in the sense that it's not that the service you render is not effective. Some, they don't really have that knowledge. And even when you are trying to impart them the knowledge, they will tell you, save me the story. Mm. You understand? They will not even want to listen to you. And in some cases, some of them have tried it themselves and it did not work. So they want to, like, you know, I've seen somebody called me and was asking me, that, can I give one year warranty? <laughs> and you'll be wondering, one year warranty. If I give you one year warranty, then what am I be, what will I be I'm doing? I'm out of job. 
That means you call me in January, you call me in February, you call me, you know, like that. So it's not always easy, but you always have people like that around you. And uh, you just have to be calm with them and try to like live uh, in peace. Because I've seen some of them that they will come up with a very big issue. And if you handle them properly, you'll be surprised that two months or three months later, they'll be referring you to someone else. And they will still be telling you, you know, I'm not happy with what you did the last time. You will just say, uh, uh, sorry, sorry, let's just move on. <laughs> so, so for me, I think um, he, he nailed it on the head right okay. now. Uh, for me, it's patience. Mm -hmm. uh, patience. Uh, kill them with follow-up. Yeah. Uh, it, but it's easier said than done for some of us that have stayed long in the industry. But for somebody that just come in on that, it's in 10,000. <laughs> you want to collect it back? <laughs> I want it back. Yeah. Because for us, for example, now we don't even collect money. We, we, we tell our clients, you know what? You can keep the money in two weeks. Once you are satisfied, oh. you can help pay. And then all of them, all of them will be like, well, really? Yeah. Because we know the kind of client we deal with. But for the one that is just upcoming, that the money, before the money comes, there's already Thank you. things to do with yeah. it. You know? And that's the, that's that's where the big challenge is. But if you see difficult clients and you tell the client, "Man, I've never collected that from you," so there's no cause for alarm. Just calm down. What's the issue? What's the problem? We'll solve it, and then we send in a team for follow up. They go follow up, and then you call again. They are coming again next week to do some form of follow up. Oh, really? By the time that's what you want. <laughs> Pay, you know. Yeah, you've indeed been in the business for long. You, you, you know the trade. You know, you know, you know the trade. It's been amazing talking to you. You are like the best in the street so far. I know that you guys are front runners in the in the industry. So, do you have any parting words to you know people out there, fellow pest control managers? Just small, 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 small things to say. Keep at it. Never give up. Yeah. Tenacity, and what, what, what would you say? Just to round up everything. Ah, uh, something. Never give up. <laughs> I mean, I feel like this industry is basically about persistence, and at the end of the day, it's definitely, definitely going to be. You can assure anybody that wants to start it because if you are calling revenue and you're mentioning how you started and what the network is, so it's quite profitable as, as a business, as a venture to, to get into. Yeah. Okay. Can I consider what we're training? I wrote to mouse would do that. <laughs> The pest control industry in the world is largely male dominated, but yet there are women killing it. And so it's our maiden episode in honor of that and also in honor of breaking the bias. We want to celebrate three amazing women in the industry who have shown and are constantly showing us that what a man can do, a woman can also do. We are committed to breaking the gender norm in the pest control industry. So, permit me to give a major, major shout out to PCO Mrs. Adegoye Kofo, the CEO of Co-Founders Limited, aka Mama Pican. He is an executive member of the Pest Control Association of Nigeria, Pican. She founded the Co-Founders Limited in 1993 and the company is doing exceptionally till date. This next woman founded our organization 12 years ago in the boys' quarters of a house with a single technician. Today, Mrs. Buki Sholeye is the CEO of Borg Zappas. In the early days, Buki Sholeye actually juggled operative and administrative roles diligently. And now, Borg Zappas is a name to reckon within the pest control industry. Finally, but not the least of all, is Mrs. Sanitarian Obiora Precious, a graduate of environmental health. She attained this niche not without being certified by a recognized body. She is a registered and licensed environmental health officer, a certified HSE officer by ISPUN. 
Obiora is the co-founder of Mega Peace Services Limited. Today, we celebrate these women not just for their tenacity, but for showing us that gender norm can be broken anywhere and everywhere. We bring to you some recent events in the pest control industry. On Monday, the 25th of April, 2022, a common egg on mosquito talk was organized by the Hatch Pest Control and Environmental Service Limited and the End Malaria in Nigeria. This event was held at Kalakuta Museum, Ikeja, Lagos, in commemoration of the World Malaria Day 2022. The Mosquito Talk 0.1 was themed harnessing innovation to reduce the malaria disease burden and save lives. It was a well-attended ceremony attended by pest control experts, environmental health professionals, social activists, the media including Object TV and Arise TV, students and youths, both online and on-site. The virtual audience joined via Zoom Live and Instagram Live. This program was moderated by Pest Control Officer Tolu Caleb, the MD Retimax Limited, and Dr. Buntu, a comedian. The panelists were Pest Control Officer PCO Francis Nwapa, Managing Director of Hatch Pest Control and Environmental Service Limited, and Convener of End Malaria in Nigeria. PCO Michael Ayotune Shomoye, an epidemiologist and pestologist. Adiola Shweton, President, Citizenship Civic Awareness Center, aka Democracy Vanguard. Sanitarian Obiora Precious, EHOHSE personnel. Pick and six measures against malaria. The Pest Control Association of Nigeria, PICAN, has called on Nigerians to seek preventive measures against the vector causing malaria by maintaining clean environment. President of the association, Mr. Olakunle Williams, made the call in a statement issued in Lagos on Monday, the 25th of April, to mark the 2022 World Malaria Day. Williams said that PICAN believed that emphasis should be placed more on malaria prevention than curative measures, which had been the practice for several years. According to him, the World Malaria Day is observed internationally on April 25 every year to recognize global efforts at controlling malaria. Bayer West Africa Limited relaunched Premise and Rodelon. Bayer's broad product portfolio includes many world-famous products which have shaped the iconic Bayer brand. Bayer Nigeria Limited recently relaunched the two of their amazing products named Premise and Rodilon. These are products that have been tested and trusted over the years by pest control professionals in Nigeria. At the relaunch of Premise and Rodilon, all the major stakeholders in the private and public pest control sector in Nigeria were present. Bayer is improving people's quality of life by preventing, alleviating, and curing diseases. And they are helping to provide a reliable supply of high quality products that helps in control of pests and yielding food and material productivity. As a world leader, Bayer Environmental Sciences aspiration is to protect the environment we live in and improve our quality of life. It is to provide greater environmental hygiene and health benefits as well as to improve living standards and comfort in the various environmental market segments. 